can we get a spotlight on Paul? <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you all? How nice um, to see you all. Yes, well, it is so nice to have you here on our Spotlight show. Um, I'm so, I was so excited when you um, agreed to join. And, you know, when we were first having our initial conversation about um, the focus topic, which was low inventory market, how to get new listings, it was no surprise that for both of us, providing excellent customer experience was it playing a huge role in continuing to get um, you know, new listings in a low inventory market. Um, you know, we've heard from some of the other guests, be, making sure that you're present um, online in order to capture leads when they're first starting their search, making sure that you are being transparent and honest in terms of um, getting more repeat and referral business. But when I was talking to you, you had a bit of a different spin on how to provide excellent customer experience as a way to address um, the challenges in a low inventory market because you um, thought, hey, why don't we focus a little bit on buyers? So um, I'm really looking forward to your session. I will let you have the stage and uh, yeah, feel free to take it away, Paul. Well, hello everyone and thanks for uh, being here, for waiting until the end. Some great speakers, some great content as usual, which is what you come to expect from Remax. What I hope to do today is basically take you on a bit of a journey into the, the experience you can develop with a buyer, which will end up in quite a bit of additional income. Um, let me just share my screen with you all. Can you see my screen? Do you see that, guys? Yep, we okay. can see your presentation. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so guys, what am I going to be talking about? Well, really about this little sentence under here, the purpose of any business is to create and keep a customer. So many businesses can create customers, lead generation, and you get busy, right? And you run a business. But the real Midas touch comes when you're able to develop business and then retain a good proportion of those customers. So retention really is the name of the game. So look, if you're successful in this business, you're constantly, like a machine, generating leads. You hear this all the time. You hear your broker owners, managers, team leaders, colleagues, Remax Europe, we're constantly telling you, you need to do, um, be a, a lead generating machine, right? An engine. Now, this is something that never stops. It's a bit like recruitment. If you run a business, you're constantly trying to recruit to replenish what you're uh, losing, yeah? It, if the engine stops, everything stops. I've heard great speakers and fantastic trainers like Tom Perry. Somebody mentioned him earlier. I know Massimo is very um, um, involved also with Tom Perry. Fantastic speaker. And he's always going on about the importance of becoming a lead generating machine. And he's so right. Yet this concept is lost on many of us. So look, if you're doing it right to begin with, we need to be constantly focused. A priority of what we do is generating leads. It never stops, even if you're busy, even if you don't feel like it's something you continually do. And you've got to have many active lead sources. Now, when I say sources, I'd like to talk in reference to this when it comes to um, Israel. So if we have any friends from Israel who are joining us, you'll understand this topographically, geographically, perfectly. But for those who aren't very familiar with the um, with Israel and the Golan Heights and the Dead Sea. And here's a bit of an analogy that might help you understand the importance of the activity of lead generation if you're going to be a top real estate agent. And I think this will help you understand and then really um, concept conceptualize and then own the importance of this huge responsibility. So if you look at the uh, cross section here, okay, from Mount Hermon, that's spelt incorrectly, um, so anyone from Israel, you would have noticed that. But from Mount Hermon, which is really high up, it snows, right? And that snow will melt come spring and summer. And as it rains along the other mountains and it's, the snow begins to melt on Mount Hermon and it travels down, this water travels down the heights through rivulets and tribulets. They become torrents that lead into the Sea of Galilee. Okay. In the Sea of Galilee, if you look at the Sea of Galilee, you've got lots of life, lots of activity. You've got birds, fish, amphibians, fishermen. 
it's it's exciting it's alive but then it's only alive as the water comes in because the water came in so lead sources are all the different places, all the different mountains where your business comes from. Now, primarily with your buyers, you've got to have multiple ways or sources that read, lead down into your lake so that your lake is full of life. Now, it's all well and good having all the water coming into your lake. But if you're not generating sales and converting those sellers, those sellers and buyers into transactions, so those leads into transactions, which overflows out the sea will die. So the Sea of Galilee is alive because it overflows. It's oxygenated. Water comes in, activity happens, and water goes out. Now, if you follow the Sea of Galilee down the Jordan River, all the way down to the um, Dead Sea, the Dead Sea is dead. The principal reason why it's dead is because, apart from being very low down and there are lots of minerals, water does not flow out because it's so low down. And that is my experience of many average agents. Many average agents are in the Sea of Galilee, they do all the right things, and then they stop doing all the right things, and then their business becomes a sea or the Dead Sea. And they're sitting in the Dead Sea and going, what happened? Then they have a eureka moment, and they go, okay, I need to generate leads and work with my buyers and work with my sellers. And they go back to the Sea of Galilee without even knowing that's what they're doing. They generate leads all over again, so they start to market and advertise. Water comes in, activity happens, and then they repeat it. They stop doing all the things that result in success. So you can either have on the left over there, the Sea of Galilee, or you can have the Dead Sea. And the interesting thing is it really is a choice. Yes, you need certain skills, you need certain activities to be happening, but this is why your broker owners, your managers are constantly tell you, telling you to develop inventory. So if we don't have listings, we don't have a business. If we don't have buyers, we don't have a business. We need both and we need activity so it can flow out in transactions and create life. So let's talk about referrals because referrals, as, as uh, Haley said, to me are a hugely important aspect of what we do and hugely underestimated. But first of all, know that over 80% of people, customers worldwide will trust, okay, um, recommendations from people that they trust and like. So if I, you trust me and I tell you, use that agent, you will probably use that agent because you like me. Now the problem's a little bit more complicated because just over 74% of your clients will give you a referral if you stay in touch. So here's the problem, we don't stay in touch. And if you don't stay in touch, you're left with the last number only. If you're happy with just 10% of people who will refer clients to you, past buyers and sellers will, part, will tell their friends, family members and colleagues at work, you should use you, that's only 10%. So you either want 70 plus percent of return business, or you want the 10%. Now, what does the research say? I looked at the latest research from the National Association of Realtors in 2020, okay? So the 2020 research was actually based upon the 2019 um, figures. So up to 61% of buyers for top agents are repeat or referred leads. So if you look at the numbers over there, referred by a friend, 41%, 5% by another agent, 3% by another business, and just over 10%, so 12% had used the same agent again. That should be much, much, much higher. Now these are top agents. Why should it be higher? Because of that 74% over there. So if you stay in touch in a value added way, you will get a lot more business. The problem is you need a structure. You need a cycle of communication. And that's what I hope to help you with today. So look at the closing ratios for generally for leads, including in real estate. The closing ratio for non-qualified referred leads is between 10 and 20%. What does that mean? Lots of hard work, but lots of disappointment and the occasional goal and celebration. That is how the average agent works. Top agents, you'll notice, and this has been my experience, I don't know if it's yours, but top agents aren't doing necessarily the same level of aggressive, competitive marketing your average agent is doing, yet they're still earning more money. So what is it they're doing? They're still advertising, they're still marketing themselves, but they're doing it in a way which seems to be less obvious, yet they're making more money and they're working less hours. 
Many of them are still in relationships with the loved ones because they are making time for that, because they have time for that, and they're earning more money. So what is the secret elixir that, they're, that we're dealing with? How do they do it? Well, basically, they work with referrals because the closing ratio, the closing ratio of referred leads is huge. It's 60%. So your best, probably your best quality lead, especially with buyers, is always going to be a referred lead. So you need to do all you can in your business to create an environment, a system, a process, which generates more referrals because you're gonna make a lot more money. You'll certainly be a top agent. So look at this. I looked at Eurostat and Eurostat basically can come up with um, research statistics for all sorts of demographics across the European Union. And in 2018, which is the latest one I could find, the most recent one, the average consumer, we're told, buys and sells property across Europe on average between seven and nine years. So every seven to nine years, a client which you dealt with today, in seven to nine years time will sell again, keep and buy again, sell, buy two, keep, buy an investment, buy something else to live. They touch property again. So the question is, where are you? Why aren't they using you? Well, there's a whole plethora of reasons why they're not using you. For example, what I've just told you over there has already told some of you, wow, I don't, be, I don't know if I'm gonna be around for seven years, nine years, really, in this business. If you're not even convinced that this is the best business you can ever get into, it's huge opportunities. If you're not convinced about that, then what I'm about to say from here onwards doesn't concern you. But if you're interested in becoming a millionaire, through a referral strategy, you should listen to what I'm gonna tell you. Because all top agents know this. These numbers, seven to nine years, are average across Europe. So in your country, in your region, they could be longer or even shorter, depending on your economy, depending on trends, depending on the lifestyle. So for example, let's take Malta. In Malta, people want to own property. Rental isn't such a, an important aspect. It's more important to own your property when you're about to get married. So that's Malta. What's it like in your country? So when you look at the average, this should tell you something. If I sold you, you're my buyer, and I sold something to you today, if I'm going to make a lot of money, I need to stay in touch with you over time. And we call this the customer lifetime value. What is the customer lifetime value? Well, basically, it's really simple. Let's take Mary, for example. Mary is a client. She's a buyer. And Mary's initial value and commission to you is 4,000 euros. So when you pay your taxes and all the rest of the VAT, you're left with 4,000 euros, but you still need to take off your, in box number two over there, your marketing costs. So take off 150 euros, you know, uh, Facebook paid ads, we know how important that is from the Go For More campaign. Um, so we, we've done all the right stuff. We generated the lead, we've sold, made 4,000, less 150. And that's where most agents stop. They start the whole process again. but. If you stayed in touch throughout the customer lifetime value of Mary, so you stayed in touch in a meaningful way so that when she comes to think about buying or selling again, she's going to call you and nobody else, then Mary buys from you again. Now, over time, Mary's wealth increases. She gets a promotion. The value of property goes up. So let's say it's five, six, seven years later, the value of properties increase. So your commission is going to increase. Mary can probably afford to buy something more expensive. She might even use you to sell what she bought from you through you seven years ago to buy something else only through you. So now you have two sales. Why would she do that? Because she likes you and she trusts you and you stayed in touch in a value added way. So that's box number three. So in box number three, you've made an additional 6,000 euros. And you'll know these numbers are very realistic. But look, you had some costs in box number four. It costs you maybe 600 euros, almost 100 euros a year, just to stay in touch with Mary. You bought her a gift every now and then, maybe sent some opera tickets. It doesn't even have to cost you 600. That's greatly, vastly uh, exaggerated. You stayed in touch, but in that period, referrals. Mary refers just two, in seven years, just two customers to you. And we know that the closing ratio is 60%. You make an additional, say, 9,000 euros. By the way, these numbers are average numbers. When I coach people 
and then we follow through their customers. These are based upon averages. So we know that you can make on average almost four times the original commission over a customer's lifetime value if you stay in touch in a meaningful way. So how are you gonna do it? You really wanna understand this. Look at Netflix. Netflix understand the customer lifetime value, okay? And they reckon, and they've publicized, that on the average customer who stays with their company for 25 months on average, they make 310 euros, dollars. So a little bit less than euros. That's enormous. That's one customer, one. They have millions of customers. So that's why it's important for Netflix to keep you engaged, to keep you paying that subscription every month. Look at Starbucks. This is something else. Now, this is from the United States, okay? Lifetime value for Starbucks of an individual customer is, over 20 years, $14,000. That's crazy. And here we are wondering, can I do it for seven and make four times the original commission? This is why you need to do this. You need to throw yourself into a strategy of building value-added services over longer periods of times with your ex-buyers who become sellers in the future. So now you're tapping into not just your buyers, but your buyers who convert into potential buyers later and sellers later on as well. Think about, think about it on a more personal level. Let's try this exercise together. Think about something which you buy daily or weekly. It could be milk, a cup of coffee, a sandwich, okay? fuel, an internet service. Think about that every day. How many times do you buy that annually? So if it's once a week, it's 52 times. If it's every day, it's a lot. And then look at the total amount you spend annually on that one product annually. Now let's take a guesstimate. Let's say it's a thousand euros on milk or, or whatever it may be on, on fuel, yeah? What if the profit margins were at least 50%? It wouldn't be on fuel. It's much less than fuel, but choose a product yeah, that you buy frequently, milk, bread, that company is making that amount of profit on one product on you annually. That could be a supermarket. That's why when you walk into a supermarket, they have what we call loyalty cards. Now, in actual fact, in pure marketing terms, they're not loyalty cards because loyalty is voluntary. I voluntarily refer or come back because I love your business. I love your brands. I trust you. What they try to do is artificially induce customer lifetime value by giving you points. So you go in, you get your receipt, you give them your loyalty card, they stamp all the points on there, and then you start to count how much money you're making and how much you, what you can do with all the points and all the gifts you can buy at Christmas. Now, not everybody is turned on by that. I personally am not, but my wife, she loves that stuff. So where do we shop? Always at the same supermarket. Now this means if there's a more expensive choice, I won't necessarily consider it because there's points to be added if I go there. So it's an artificial loyalty. Now, obviously, I'm not saying you should create a system of artificial loyalty, but that's the power of the customer lifetime value and why brands and services all over the world know the power of this and tap into it. Do you? You can, but do you? So the right question will be, if you want to continue listening to me, will you? If you will, then listen for further, if you will. We know the obvious sources of referrals. They're not always used. So we have a great collaboration across the Remax network internationally, okay? We get offices uh, referring clients to different regions and countries. We have agent to agent. We have a collaboration, which we highly encourage, okay? Cooperation, very important to create more transactions. But then we have these. These are not as commonly uh, appreciate it. I'm referring to referrals from your current and past customers. Let's look at the current customers. In the psychology of marketing and sales, there's a term called radar effect. Radar effect basically means this. When you're driving in your car with your buyers, one at the front seat, one on the back seat with their masks and the sanitizers, as you're driving along, having a conversation before you go to the next property to show them, you can ask them when there's a bit of trust between you, so you may not be able to ask this in the first instance, but let's say there's a bit of rapport going now. You, you've got a bit of that going, okay? And the, you understand each other and you know what football teams you all like and all the rest. Then you ask the question in the car, Joe, Jolene, do you know of anyone else that I can help maybe in buying or selling property? The moment you ask that, 
Joe and Jolene's radar will go on. They have a radar without even realizing it on their head and they've had it for weeks, maybe even months. As they become aware of buying and selling property because they want to sell to buy something and you're their agent, they are talking about it. They are viewing it. They are researching it all the time. They are hyper aware, like a radar, of all opportunities. As they're driving down the street, they see a for sale buyer, for sale, for sale by owner sign you didn't know about. Then they talk to the cousin at the barbecue who says, we're thinking about buying. A friend at work says, oh, we've just sold. We're looking for something to buy or we need to sell. And before you know it, they're going, oh, Uncle John. I was with him on the weekend at the barbecue and he said he's looking to buy or to sell. Here's his number. That's called radar effect. The other one is from, excuse me. So that's your current customers. Your past customers, however, are an even more important resource. Now, when I say past customer, they don't necessarily have to be customers, buyers, who actually close a transaction with you. They are the best, but you can expand this. What do I mean? When you look at uh, the research from the National Association of Realtors and uh, Eurostat have also, so from the National Association of Realtors and keeping in mind the Eurostat numbers, we know that there's a thing called the 1990 trap. Now you won't find the 1990 trap written anywhere. I coined that. And the reason why I did that is because it's a trap. And what it's based upon is the research from 2017, again, from the NAR in the United States, which tell you this. When they research clients who bought property or sold property through an agent today, and they ask them amongst other questions, would you use that agent, that realtor again? 90% claimed they would use that realtor again. But when they track these customers years later after their cycle, and they ask them, did you use that agent again? 90% say they didn't. Other research shows that after three months, 50% of your current customers who stop dealing with you today in three months time will forget your name, let alone your phone number. Why? Because you're not staying in touch. So you're gonna get trapped in that if you think that people you dealt with two, three months, years ago are gonna remember you and refer to you by you doing nothing at all. They forget about you. They will use other agents. There are agents aggressively seeking them out and you're nowhere to be seen. You're absent without permission. So how do we stay in touch? I'm gonna to recommend to you a powerful cycle of communication. At the end of a transaction, you need to fall into a system. Now, whether you do this through uh, a CRM, very important you have a CRM, okay? Or you do it through a simple diary process, you've got to do it in a way that is automated. In other words, if you try to remember to do this, when you start to build up a good client base of, of people you're going to stay in touch with, you will begin to forget and make mistakes. So find an automated hands-free system to remind you to stay in touch with your customers over the 13090 process. What is the 13090? So let's say we close the transaction today, or they decided not to, to buy today. They decided to take a break. That's one. A week later, one, one week later, phone them, get into a Zoom conversation, FaceTime them. Find an excuse. How are you? Just to let you know. Wanted to remind you. Can I add you to? Find an excuse a week later to stay in touch. You'll also be surprised that a week later, how much they still have that radar effect, who they've spoken to, and how many referrals they'll give you if you simply ask. So stay in touch a week later and ask the question. Listen, if you come across anyone you think I can help, please let me know. And they go, bang, and out comes a referral. Or no referral. That's why there's 30. 30 is 30 days later. Leave a month pass. So you put into your CRM, remind me to get in touch every day in 30 days, Mr. and Mrs. Joel and Jolene. You pick up the phone or you email them, you message them, WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever it may be. You, you text them and you tell them, hi, I'm still around just to let you know this came on board. I heard this, hope everything's okay, whatever COVID. You found an excuse, and this is where the skill comes in. You've got to find legitimate, authentic reasons to stay in touch with people. You're adding value now. Every 90 days, you message, phone, FaceTime, find something every 90 days. What are these every 90 days? You'll look, if there's Mr. and Mrs., there's two birthdays. So you've got two reasons. If they're both 
celebrate Christmas, you've got another reason. So that's three taken care of. Okay, so find if they have a graduation, an anniversary, because in your CRM, you're putting in wedding anniversaries, daughter's graduation. I don't know, November the 5th, the dog goes into the vet for an operation. You pick up the phone. If you don't stay in touch in a value added way, a sincere, authentic way like this, they will forget about you. And agents like I used to be will steal them from you. You don't deserve them if you don't stay in touch. You need to build castles around your customers. Now, you notice that once annually, we're doing something else. So you follow this cycle, but once a year, I'm gonna recommend you do this. You, you do what's called, you present what's called the annual market report. Now, there's a handout which I've sent to Haley, and Haley will be passing on to everyone. And this handout will outline in draft process all the things you need to do to stay in touch once a year in a value-added, meaningful, authentic way. So once a year, they get a nice bound, professionally graphics with a nice cover and back bound report on their property. And Paul, I just wanted to let you know, we just posted right. that in the chat. Fantastic. So guys, it's in the chat, so download it. Remember, when the Zoom call is over, you lose the chat, you lose the link. So download it now, or I don't know, Ailey, maybe you can send it to them by email? Yeah, actually, we will <laughs> we will yeah. be sending a follow up email, including Paul's handout, your presentation, and the recording. So everybody, Fantastic. don't worry if you don't get the the download link now. You will be receiving it um, in a follow up email from us. Very Back good. to Fantastic, you, Haley. Right. So just to I'm going to conclude now, this handout which I'm sending you, which Haley is going to be sending on to you, is in Word format. Why? So you can edit it. Right. It's in English, so. Some regions will need to translate it, but it gives you at least the structure of what your report could, your report could include. So it includes, for example, an introduction letter, personalized with your logo at the top. You add two business cards to it, so you insert them in nicely. Then you have a section, for example, on the state of the economy. What's the economy doing? What are the projections? Now, where do you get this stuff from? Do you need to be a KPMG, PwC, Deloitte & Touche auditor to do this? No, you can DJ stuff. So a lot of these big companies, marketing companies, financial institutions, the big four accounting firms, they produce public reports. And these public reports, you can DJ, grab this stuff, they're public, and include them into your report. Just always cite the source and the date the source was quoted at, so that it's legitimate. Beef it up with a CMA on their property, on their home. So they know, for example, the value of their home in the last three years, how it's gone up or gone down. You can include, for example, you're seeing that handout an area which shows them the rate of return or rental yield. So if you were to rent out your property, at the moment you'll get X, Y, Z. And what you're doing here is informing your customers annually of the state of the progress of their greatest investment that the buyer generally makes, and they've done so in trusting you. So don't they deserve, as Lawrence said, we are obliged to do this for them. Don't they deserve something of quality like this from you? and they will reciprocate. They will remember you when the time comes to buy or sell again. Remember, you're actually giving them the content. Now, at the end of the report, you make a little note and you'll see in the handout, it's there. You ask them, would it be okay for me to call you next week? Can I add you to buy a match, for example? Buy a match is a powerful tool on iList where you pipe you know, similar properties um, to the one they're living in or similar properties in competition with theirs or apartments for sale, which maybe they might be interested in buying as an investment. So you ask them, uh, I'll call you in a week's time to see if you'd like me to add you to this list. And you call them, another excuse. And before you know it, they go, listen, can we meet up? We've got an idea, bang, you've made business. And you kept the customer for life, customer lifetime value. So have a look at that handout and use it. So guys, you know, trying to get this right is really not complicated. I think what most agents lack, this is one of the distinguishing factors between, in my humble opinion, your average agent and your top performer. The difference is we all get the material. You all get excellent stuff. Listen to Massimo and to Lawrence and to everyone who's been delivering stuff to you over these spotlight sessions. You get quality information and training. What we need you to do is to take action. So taking action sometimes means putting into your diary a time to do it. 
So one action I'm asking you all to do is to enter into your diary a time to review the PowerPoint presentation, which you'll get, to look at that handout and begin the process of making more money. And to end, guys, I'd like to give something to you. This is being given to you at absolutely no cost whatsoever and no obligation. I want to help people make more money. I love what I do, and you know this. Now, if you love what you do and you want to make more money, then unless you're already in a region which is already using my e-learning, where you already have access to this, probably in your own language, then you have access, whoever you are, to this particular course from my e-learning channel. It's called Total Biopsychology. What you need to do is go to that website at the bottom down there, etrainingterm.com. You start, you go into the website, set up an account, purchase the course, put in the, pro the promo code SPOTLIGHT21 in capital letters. It's case sensitive. So SPOTLIGHT21 and don't pay, and it will give you the course free of charge. And you have it for two months at no further fee. There's no renewal fees. Don't worry, you won't be asked. You won't be charged anything. There's no hidden charges. You've got it for two months. Do the course and learn about the power of working with buyers from a psychological aspect. For example, in this particular course, you're going to learn the difference between two types of buyers, a question you all have. Why do some buyers seem to be time wasters? Now, if you haven't qualified them, you can't say that. So, of course, you always need to qualify your buyer. But let's say you qualify them and they just can't make up their mind and it's been six months. Should I drop that buyer? In the course, you'll realize and understand there are two types of buyers in buying psychology. I didn't invent this. Again, I'm DJing other psychologists and their material. There are satisficers and maximizers. Satisficers buy quicker. Maximizers are more cautious. They take the time, but they will buy. So the question is, how do you know who's a satisficer and the maximizer? That's just one of the things you'll learn in that course when you put in that promo code and you start to develop a new understanding about the completeness of working with buyers. And that's me, basically. That's my session. I don't know if there's any time for questions, just in case anybody has any questions. Then if you do, then I'm just going to stop sharing and go back to that. So, Fantastic. Guys. Thank you so much, Paul, for that action-packed half hour. I know we went a little over time, but for those of you who stuck around, it was worth it because you get a free course. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paul, for being so generous, sharing the handout, um, your expertise, and of course, that, that training. Huge, huge opportunity, you guys, to work with buyers, leverage your buyers to get more referral leads for listings. So, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive to work with buyers in order to get sellers, but as the research shows, the studies show, you're, you know, you have a higher chance of converting the lead if you're working off of a referral. So try out some of the stuff that um, Paul has shared with you today. And as he said, most importantly, take action. Thank you so much, Paul, for, for sharing um, your, your experience and your expertise with us today. To all of you guys still hanging out, sorry we went a little over time. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Before you go, two additional training opportunities. Um, I want to make sure you don't miss out. On July 1st, we're going to be hearing from Jason Pantana, um, one of Tom Ferry's um, top trainers and coaches on the topic that Massimo was talking about in the beginning, which is your Google business page. This training opportunity is going to be taking place July 1st. Save the date. We haven't officially announced it yet, um, but you can follow Remax Europe on Instagram in order to sign up and get more information. The second training opportunity is going to be um, Remax Summer Camp with me. I'm going to be hosting every Wednesday starting July 14th, a jam-packed half-hour training session to keep you motivated, engaged, and dialed in over the summer months so that you can stay productive. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Haley.still, for more information on how to join that session. And of course, we have our next Spotlight Show coming up in the fall. It has been so wonderful being your host. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic summer. Stay safe and stay productive. And I look forward to seeing you in the next upcoming training opportunities.